Hello and welcome to another segment of Ageless, the program dedicated to showing that being over 50 can be the sunny side of life. My name is Karen Hefner, I'm your, I'm your host, and our guest for this segment is Jeffrey Rosenthal. Hello. Welcome. Jeffrey, you're a plastic surgeon, and I um, actually found out about you or became introduced to you because of a program called uh, Wine, Women, and Wisdom. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can just tell us a little bit about that. Uh, three of my favorite subjects, Wine, Women, and Wisdom. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, th we're putting together a, a lecture seminar on March 3rd, uh, and it's going to be in the Westport Playhouse, and it's going to be catered, and women are going to get together and have a good time and have some great food, and I'll be speaking about different aspects of cosmetic surgery and how it interrelates with body and mind, and we're going to have a best-selling author and one of the uh, artistic co-directors as well. Well, it's for charity also. Uh, one of the um, things that I always try to do when I give any kind of seminar or fundraisers um, is for the Norma Free and Breast Care Center in Bridgeport, which is just an amazing, loving, caring center that I have uh, personal experience um, with through family members uh -huh. that they've taken care of them, and it's just lovely. And everyone should know about it because it's a center that uh, men and women can use uh, for breast cancer, and it's just a lovely place. Maybe you could tell us, um, I also was excited when I first started talking to you about the fact that you're also an artist, I'm an artist and you're an artist, and I thought that was amazing, but what was most amazing was sort of how you incorporated that into your life in terms of making, I'm right now in the process of a career change and trying to decide how I can sort of bring all the things that I am as a person into whatever the new career I have, and you, you found a way to do that, and I was very impressed by that. Well, I really enjoy medicine, but within medicine, the only type of doctor I can really be is a plastic surgeon. And, and one of the reasons is that I can use all the science and all the medicine because the human body always fascinated me ever mm -hmm. since I was a young child. I, I still can't understand how the fingers and hand work. It's just every time <laughs> I look at them, I say, wow, that's like just amazing to me. Um, and then I can bring together the creativity and the artistic sense that uh, makes my life so enjoyable. I just like to imagine, like to create. There's, um, I, I don't think there's limitations in life for us. I just think we don't know the right avenue to get there yet. And once we find that avenue, then it just opens up and it's a groundswell and it's just beautiful. Um, I, I think it perhaps uh, going into plastic surgery may have started when I was in my uh, earlier years, six and seven, I lived in uh, Plainview. And one of my jobs was to uh, trim the hedges in front of us. And we had these two huge bushes that were, you know, I had to trim and I, I trimmed them round. And now I realize I was trimming them into the shapes of breasts. Uh, <laughs> 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 I, but it was a three dimensional uh, sculpting. And, and that's what gave me I the understanding. That, did you? <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't do that on purpose, by the way, <laughs> but it's uh, just in retrospect. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's just three dimensional sculpting. Mm -hmm. And that gave me mm -hmm. the idea of, of using my hands and my mind, and mm -hmm. it's just a very enjoyable profession for me to be in. And actually, you don't do breast con reconstruction anymore? I, I don't do the reconstruction part right. anymore, but okay. I do other breast surgery, yes. Right. And um, one of my reasons for being affiliated with the Breast Care Center is not because uh, I do reconstruction any longer. In right. fact, I don't, but just because it's a great center. Right, right. Yes. Um, you don't just do sculpture, you also do painting and I, um, I do all types of different painting and watercolor and acrylics. Um, I sculpt in stone, metal, copper. I do, um, uh, I have a mosaic coffee table out of copper and uh, wood, and there's actually a painting on the bottom of it because I like to finish things. Um, I have a copper bar with a mosaic top and a wood. Um, I do uh, all kinds of stone. I do um, uh, poetry, children's books. Um, I have designed a jacket, some jewelry. Um, I like to tinker and play. And uh, again, I'm self-taught, so there's no limitations. I can do I whatever I, I feel I'm like doing, too, exactly. uh, wi nope. which is a freedom as absolutely, well. Absolutely. Um, you know, if you're taught a certain regimented way and you right. say, you can't do that, right. then you say, you well, I can't it. do it. You believe yeah. it. Yeah. Well, no one taught me how to do that. Right. So I can, when I do my photography, I can crop it any way I want right. and take any kind of colors. Um, and it's, you know, that's what I like. I, uh -huh. I like my mind to create, it relaxes me. Uh -huh. And I, I'm a very visual person, uh -huh. and that's what stimulates me, uh -huh. uh, visual parts of life. Right, how do you have fi find time to do all that? I mean. Well, um, I've been doing it for over 30 years. Um, it started out doing photography, and then it progressed.
rescue pendant drawings. And actually, in one of my psychiatry classes, I was doing a pendant drawing of a Oriental couple, and the teacher walked by. Fortunately, with psychiatry class, because <laughs> <laughs> uh, the teacher walked by, the professor, and he walked by. He looked at it. He said, "Oh, that's nice." And he kept, <laughs> he just kept, analyzed kept it walking. And away. Uh, <laughs> and then I went into uh, sculpting and stone, metal, and different things. And um, uh, I just. Uh, do it at different times. Uh, uh -huh. uh, sculpting takes a long time, yeah. so now I'm doing a lot more photography and uh, I do paintings. And um, I, I have a big loft at home where I do my paintings and photography. I do actually every day. I take pictures of patients, and I'm always cropping things and playing mm -hmm. with uh, mm -hmm. colors. And mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I always find time to write a poem on a weekend. I'll be sitting and just uh, something will come into my just mind, and I'll just right. write it down. Right. Right. That's great. Um, and you said that you actually have the artwork in your office as well. The, um, the office, um, when I moved to this newer office about eight, nine years ago, I designed the office and I designed it to be a very peaceful place. Mm -hmm. um, and when you walk in, I have different sculptures and mm -hmm. uh, paintings and photography all throughout the entire office. Uh, as well as my home. I, I have a large home and the walls are covered with paintings and photographs and sculptures all over the place. And it, it's very peaceful to sit there and look around at things I've created yeah. and look at the colors. Yeah. I right. enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, it's not in uh, a sense uh, egotistical that I've no. done it. It's just no. very relaxing to yeah. be almost around friends all the time. Yeah. Uh, it brings back memories of when you've created something. Uh, and when I have, I've had art shows in France and in Westport and Fairfield University, um, individuals looking will always say, will you interpret this for me? And I say, no, <laughs> yeah, art, art is uh, for what you enjoy, right. what you take away right. from it. And if you're pleased with something, that makes me greatly satisfied. Right. If you take away anything from it and it brings back a good memory, makes you smile, makes you happy, that's great for me. Uh, or even makes you think. Right. And so that, that's why uh, I do the art shows as well. I don't do it for profit. I, in fact, I, I don't even like to sell my original paintings. Uh, they're too personal. They're one of a kind. Right. Uh, photography I can sell because I can reproduce them. Uh, but the actual sculptures and paintings I don't. So I just like to show them. That's great. Well, it's, it's nice also to have a place where um, it's, it's sort of showing people something about you. I mean, and, and it's funny because I, I find that most artists are afraid to show, uh, sometimes, some art times artists who are, will not sell their work sometimes are afraid to show people their work because they think it's so personal that someone will actually see them. But I find that when most people look at it, they see themselves, or they don't, but they don't see you. Well, they, they have their own interpretation exactly. of the art itself, right. and um, that's why I don't want to impose my will or right. my interpretation upon them. I right. mean, it's just not fair. Um, and my patients do, uh, I frequently have patients coming to me because they know I do the art mm -hmm. and they realize that I have the aesthetic sense and the, the balance um, of the scientific knowledge and the ability to execute this, um, what I choose to do when mm -hmm. I'm sculpting their faces or bodies and, mm -hmm. and they, they like that and mm -hmm. I think that is a good mix. And again, I am visual so when I will look at a face or a body, I, I perceive things instantaneously in very tiny dimensions and that's how I work. I work mm -hmm. in minute little dimensions of millimeters when I'm making changes and to me if it's off just a tiny amount it's mammoth amount so it's mm -hmm. got to be very precise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite part of being a surgeon? The, the creativity and making um, seeing my patients happy afterwards it's um, when I take off the bandages and I look at what I've accomplished for them and, and they look at it a little